Hi, this is Doug with 8 Twit Engineering, and today I'm gonna make a fire in the crack of this here boulder. Yes, you heard me right. I don't have much else going on, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, if you recall, if you watched last week's video, I made a big roaring bonfire against this boulder, and it really did a number on the boulder. You can see all the fragments right here, and uh, here's a just a close-up of the remains of all the, the pieces that flaked off the boulder, including one piece that I Gandalfed off the boulder. If you're a Lord of the Rings or a Hobbit fan, <laughs> uh, check out that video, it's pretty cool. I decided not to keep the fire pit here, uh, so it's all cleared out. This is what it looked like last week, uh, but yeah, it just got rid of all these rocks. It didn't feel right somehow, it's just... It's, I'm still trying to process what happened there. <laughs> um, just it didn't feel like a good place to have a fire pit for whatever reason. But this crack really intrigued me from the get-go, even before I, I I thought of the fire ring putting it here. Uh, cool thing about this crack, it looks like a laser beam just cut this boulder in half, and you can get a close-up of it, of the crack here. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, pine needles and leaves in there that I'm gonna clear out. Now, I don't know if this has any practical usage. It's just kind of a cool idea I had. So I first collected a bunch of wedge-shaped rocks, as you can see here, and just put them on top of the boulder. And then it took me an hour or two, but I selected uh, the, a choice few that you see here that uh, seemed to fit in really well you know this crack kind of narrows so kind of it's kind of tricky to get all the rocks to fit uh, I did some minimal shaping with a simple chisel and hammer nothing fancy but now I'm going to first clear out all the pine needles so let's get to that Well, clearing that out was a little trickier than I thought. There was some, some roots and rocks in there that I had to use my iron pry bar to help with, but now let's get all these wedge-shaped rocks into place. Right, I hammered in all these wedge rocks. I, the first one I was hammering broke on me, so I was I had, to, I had to improvise a little bit. You can see I left this gap in the bottom, kind of like a flue and a place where I can stoke the fire. Maybe if I was into blacksmithing, maybe you could like put the uh, your you know piece of metal in there that you're forging. I don't know. I, you know, I have no experience with that, but. And yeah, you can see now there's still a bunch of gaps between the rocks, usually triangular gaps. So luckily I'm gonna take all of these shards that spalled off the big boulder when I was making my bonfire, which are, they're usually flat and triangular, luckily enough. I'm just gonna fill in all those gaps. So let's do that. <laughs> Okay, nothing too pretty here. Just kinda ramming all these shards into any crack just so I leave this big hole in the top of the oven. If this turns into more of a permanent thing, then yeah, I'll spend a little more time prettying it, prettying it up. But for now, this is just an experiment. And I imagine some of these will maybe even 
pop out <laughs> if the fire gets real hot or shard further, but we'll see. Next step is getting a fire going in here. To start the fire, I have here a birch bark sandwich, which is two pieces of birch bark with a lot of just uh, hickory shavings. I put some cotton meatballs in there. I'm going really overboard with the tinder and kindling here because I'm not going to have direct direct access to the fire. So I, I just don't know how hard it's going to be to start considering I can't you know, poke and prod it exactly how I want after I shove it in. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to try to get some birch twigs, some black birch twigs. That sandwich lit right up. There's a lot of smoke coming through the hole. I have a lot of other shavings, kindling here. I'm just going to shove that down the hole. I can't look to see down the hole because there's too much smoke coming out. <laughs> the fire is really responding to me blowing on it just because it's all channeled in there. Yeah, it kind of died for a second after I put all the birch bark twigs. Just w with one blow, it's just just <laughs> look all that smoke. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, fire is starting to peek out the hole here. Jeez. Get it. <laughs> You can tell how powerful the fire is just because of the constrained space it's in. Again, I'm using way more kindling than I otherwise would just to make sure the fire has a good base just because I don't have direct access to it to like make a teepee out of the sticks here and stuff like that. Looking into this hole, it's like you're looking into the barrel of a gun. You're like, eh, should I be doing this? Okay, I'm going to start putting uh, larger pieces of split wood. I'm trying to poke the fire a little deeper because right now it's it's uh, pretty far away from the center of the crack. Nice is what I want. <laughs> One thing that's making it take longer is that the wind is, uh, it's shifting. I think for the most part, it's coming from this direction. Ideally, it would come right into this little flue, which it is now. I think the fire's starting to reach some of the wet pine needles that were still in there. A ton of smoke just started coming out. I got a good enough base that I can start putting these bigger black birch branches in from the bottom, I think. <sighs> I 
Well, it was worth trying, but the stones, I think they just make, they make it too hard to get wood into the fire. Like I can't get the wood deep enough and I think it's cutting off the airflow. So I didn't get the raging like geyser of flame that I was shooting for. So instead, I'm gonna let this fire calm down tonight, uh, let the embers die down, take out these rocks and just try to make a fire in the crack without the rocks and see how that does. So stay tuned. Oh. All right, it's tomorrow and let's take these rocks out. You can see they're obviously really black and charred. And as for the inside, probably pretty hard to see on camera here, but everything burned down to ashes. A bit of a spalling on the inside of the crack. And I think some of the rock loosened here a little bit. But let's get a fire going with it looking pretty much just like this. So I'll, I'll still keep the side wall there. Another beefy birch bark sandwich going in. I'm going to try to light this one by hand. And let it get going a bit because I'm dropping it in, dropping it in this time instead of pushing it in. I think I've come up with a good method here where I get the fire kind of started in one spot, kind of near the center of the boulder. And I was having a problem because I was, I was throwing sticks in and as you throw them in, they're, they're kind of snuffing out the fire. So it was, it was hard to get the fire started. But then I realized if I, if I stack the logs, branches over here to one side, it sort of forms a flammable wall. So yeah, you have this rock wall here containing heat, and then this wall, which both contains heat and uh, lets the flame ri uh, rise, climb to the top of the crack, which is what I what I want. You can start to see a little geyser effect going on. Uh, I think it'll get a little bigger, so let's watch what happens. I think I figured out another trick to making a fire in the crack of a boulder. So I have this, the logs stacked horizontally uh, to, the, to the left side of the boulder. The fire in the center and then the rocks on the side. Uh, the last trick I found is to put logs in the center right over the fire vertically. And this makes like lots of little chimneys that the fire can additionally climb to get to the top. Uh, one thing this <laughs> this type of fire is very good at is creating a ton of smoke um, and lots of smoke happen assuming your wood is nice and dry and seasoned uh, smoke happens when the wood is super hot like hot enough to burst into flame but it doesn't have uh, the room to create flame flame needs <clears throat> a bit of space and that's what's happening here. The, the crack is just really confined and the wood is 
stacking up against itself and there's just not enough room so that's what that's why there's so much smoke it should go down as the fire yeah it's reaching the top here so hoping the smoke will start to lessen a bit but yeah if you need to make a lot of smoke with dry wood this uh this is a good option <laughs> so let's see how how much bigger it gets i'll call it quits here Well, I'm going to call it quits here. This thing will keep burning for a while, but it's just making too much smoke. So, here we go. Of course, made a ton more smoke with that. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think if this was a success or a failure. And I'm gonna weasel my way out of it and say I didn't really have a specific goal in mind So it's neither a success or a failure just an experiment I, I did kind of want a big geyser here, but it just wasn't in the cards And yeah, it's just this is a really good way to make a lot of smoke if there is any success in this project It is to say that so perhaps if you want to smoke uh, meat in a survival situation uh, yeah, uh, it's not something i'm an expert at but maybe this would be a good way to do it but other than that it, it kind of feels like a failure it kind of stings i was hoping for a cooler effect but hopefully at least it was somewhat educational to you maybe you can think of a way to either improve the fire or or use it for something but please like share comment subscribe and maybe my next video will be more successful <laughs>